Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to the Stroke Assembly live and in your own homes. My name is Tony Banks, Head of Conference and Events at the Stroke Association and proud chair of the UK Stroke Assembly. We really are excited to get started with another round of the Stroke Assembly webinars, and we're delighted to have you back. We hope you had a fantastic summer and managed to get out and about a little bit. Um, and here we are again, ready to start a new series of the Stroke Assembly webinars. We are talking about staying active today, and we've got a fantastic panel for you of uh, people affected by stroke are gonna be sharing firsthand experience of how they've stayed active during the coronavirus lockdown period and beyond. Uh, as always, we've got Natalie with us, who's gonna be taking the questions from you on the chat box. Please do post. Uh, say hello, introduce yourselves, and put your questions to today's speakers. Uh, Natalie, good morning, welcome back. Morning everybody, and welcome to today's session. Um, as always, if you do have any comments and questions, please do use the chat bar. You'll be able to find this on the right-hand side of your screen, and if you scroll down right to the bottom, you'll be able to post all your comments and questions into the text bar and submit using the little arrow key. I look forward to reading all of those. Thanks, Natalie. Uh, for those of you that may be joining us for the first time today, you can watch all of our previous webinars from back in June and July on the Stroke Association's website. You need to visit stroke.org.uk forward slash UKSA virtual or share the link in the chat box as well in a moment. You can also post if you're using social media uh, on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Please spread the word. We'd love more of you to join. Use the hashtag stroke assembly. So let's get started. Today's session is all about staying active, and I'm delighted to have some guests with me today who are going to be talking to you about that. We have Emma, Tony, Ruth, and Alice with us today, and we'll bring them on screen now and we'll say hello. Good morning, everybody. Morning. Hi. Hi. So we'll do some introductions first, if that's okay. Uh, I'm going to ask each of you to just introduce yourselves to our audience. Tell them a little bit about yourselves and your connection to stroke, if that's okay. Maybe we'll start with you, please, Emma. You're back. We, uh, some people may recognize you from the, uh, the first webinar we did on staying active. It's nice to have you back, Emma. Thank you. Um, yeah, it's lovely to be here. I've worked for the Stroke Association for just over eight years now. Um, and my background has always been in exercise and rehab. So I'm really lucky that I'm managing to do that in a stroke specific way at the moment and really enjoying it. Thanks, Emma. It's great to have you back. Uh, Tony, welcome. Uh, this is your first Stroke Assembly webinar. Do you want to introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Tony Robson. I suffered a stroke back in, it was about 15 months ago, but I think it was um, April 2019. Um, and um, I've just I think we may have lost Tony temporarily there. Sorry, Tony. We'll hopefully get you back. And we'll continue talking to you in a moment. Um, let's move on. Uh, Ruth, good morning. Welcome. Good morning from the lovely Scottish Borders. I'm a stroke survivor. I survived a stroke in 2016 when I was on holiday in Spain, so not really what you want. And this left me with the neuro fatigue, unable to work or drive. So it's really quite big life change. So since then, I've told people that the mental journey has been so much worse than the physical journey. And I've been trying to keep myself busy. So gardening and running and walking and Volunteering with the Stroke Association, I quite, do quite a lot of things with them and just oh. try to learn Italian because they say that that's good for neuroplasticity. So I'm just trying to get myself back and busy and embrace life again. But it does take time. And I really want to talk to you more about some of the things you've just mentioned there today, Ruth. And we're really happy to have you with us. Thanks for joining us. And we have Alice with us this morning as well. Good morning, Alice. Hi. Uh, yeah, so I'm um, part of the webinar because I ran the London Marathon on my treadmill back in April. I was due to be running, um, obviously, the actual thing, and it's sort of the Stroke Association, which is a charity very close to my heart. So I didn't want all my training and efforts to go to waste, so I decided I'd do it on the marathon to raise the awareness and publicity for 
Cultural Sport Association instead. An amazing challenge and we're looking forward to hearing more about that as well this morning. It does appear we're having a few technical problems with Tony, which is a real shame. We hope we'll get him back so we can talk to him. He keeps popping in and out. Tony, are you, are you with us? <coughs> Not sure. Not to worry, yeah. these things happen. It's it's live. It, we always have a few technical problems. Hi, Tony, can you hear us? Yes, I can. Oh, good. Good Sorry. to have you with us, Tony. Don't worry, you were just introducing yourself, Tony. You, I might, you might be able to just do that briefly now. Oh, we're having some awful trouble with Tony. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry to all of you watching about the technical problems we're experiencing with him. We'll hopefully get him back and, and we will talk to him. But maybe let's let's begin. And, and Emma, if we could start with you, perhaps. We're going to ask some questions to you all this morning about staying active and how important that is in anybody's journey uh, in their life after stroke. Emma, you're a stroke support coordinator for the Stroke Association. You specialise in, in, in keeping active um, and supporting people into staying active. Do you want to tell us a little bit more about what you do and, and the things you've been up to with stroke survivors during the coronavirus pandemic? Yeah, um, well, in normal circumstances, we would um, do like a 12-week course where we'd meet stroke survivors in leisure centres. we do some um, bit of chat about ways to change your lifestyle after stroke and also to stay positive. And then we do a full hour of exercise. And through the pandemic, we've tried to keep that as close as possible to what we'd normally do. Um, we've got a, a Facebook group. We have Zoom and Facebook live sessions where people can join us and do the exercises that we'd normally do in the leisure centres. Um, and we've adapted the, the chats a little bit so that we're more focused on your emotional well-being just to try and keep people positive throughout the time um, and give lots of tips on how they can stay active at home as well. Thanks, Emma. It's, I mean, we've seen and spoken so much about the importance of technology during the, the pandemic. It's helped to keep people connected. Um, and obviously it's helping to keep people active as well. That's been so important, hasn't it? Yeah, definitely. Um, a lot of people had maybe done our 12 week course around two years ago and were doing lots of other face to face activities with other organisations. And then when um, when lockdown happened, they didn't know where to go and then came back to us and said, what can we do? So um, as well as taking people through like new people through a course, we've also reached out to everyone that has been on that course so that they can stay active um, and we've got the people who, who've been active for over two years now able to stay active throughout the lockdown which has really helped um, the emotional well-being as well. Yeah and I might come back to that point in a moment Emma about emotional well-being and, and how important mental health is in, in staying active where I think today we're talking about varieties of ways people can stay active, not just physically, but mentally is so important, as you've pointed out. Um, we'll maybe come back to that point in a moment and, and, and we'll move uh, perhaps next to, to you, Ruth. What I'd like to do as well at various points is point everybody watching in the direction of some useful resources around the things that we're talking about today. So Natalie will share some links uh, when we mention them and I'll keep coming back to various things that are available to you watching or anybody uh, that has been affected by stroke to support you in keeping active after stroke. So we'll, we'll continue to come back to that through the session. Uh, but Ruth, uh, perhaps we can talk to you a little, if that's okay. So um, you said stroke survivor yourself, you, you've got a keen interest in, in gardening. We, we know this has been an important way that a lot of people after stroke keep active, getting into the garden. Um, do you want to tell us a little bit about the, that and, and how passionate you are about that and how that's helped you? I think basically it's getting out into the fresh air and doing things. You've got a sort of responsibility to look after these other living plants. So you need to go out and water them. You need to go out and nurture them and prune them and do all the different things to them. So it is really quite an, an important responsibility. And I think that helps you to take the focus away from yourself. Because as we were saying, the mental health side of having a stroke is just enormous. And it's quite often forgotten about. 
Yeah, and I think, it, as you say, the mental health, anything we can do to improve that is is so, so important. And it appears gardening is is something that a lot of people are uh, very interested in. We, we have a little video, which I think we're going to play. Uh, we'll ask if that can be shared right now, actually, and then we'll talk a little bit more about the importance of gardening. I'm Ruth. I'm a stroke survivor and a stroke association volunteer living in Scotland. I survived a web just stroke nearly four years ago whilst on holiday in Spain, which has meant having to give up work and stop driving, both major life changes. Nearly two years ago, I moved into a house with a garden and a greenhouse, and this has really helped me to rebuild my life after stroke. Gardens can be a peaceful place, not just for the wildlife and plants there. They can provide a pl quiet place to let the brain calm. Very important for stroke survivors. Aside from the physical movement required in a garden, digging, hoeing, grass cutting and lifting, which all help with mobility issues, a garden requires planning what to plant where, where to put it, when to water, when to prune, all I do find that as my garden grows, so do I, by acquiring skills, setting myself little goals, eating more healthily and getting regular exercise. I find looking after other living things gives a sense of nurture and responsibility, great for your self-esteem, and of course all the fresh air and exercise helps me to sleep. And what better place to sit at the end of a long hard day's gardening, listening to birdsong, reading a good book and sipping. Well, that's a lovely video, Ruth, and it, it sums up really nicely, I think, there, doesn't it? And um, for anybody watching, we have got an ongoing partnership at the Stroke Association with Dobbies at the moment, so you can see more videos and resources on our website, we'll post the link in the chat box shortly. Uh, they're also available on My Stroke Guide as well, our self-help tool. So plenty of resources if you're interested in gardening um, available on the Stroke Association's website. But Ruth, maybe just, just picking up on some of the things you said in that video, I was really interested in goal setting and how you've kind of associated that to gardening in itself, but also other parts of your recovery. Um, do you wanna tell us a little bit more about how important that's been for you? I think it's really important to set yourself goals, but they have to be realistic because, you know, I'm not going to get to Alice's level, which I, I do aspire to run the London Marathon, but I think you just have to take everything step by step. So you're looking at your garden. I mean, I moved into this house and I'd never really had a garden before. So I had to sort of work out how to do the greenhouse and asking people is a great way because they do love to share their garden stories with you. And then we swap plants and things, particularly this year, because it's been so difficult to get plants and just planning where to put things. So I worked out that I wanted one side of the garden to have flowers. I wanted a pretty side and a practical side. So the, other, the practical side's got the greenhouse, it's got the fruit trees and the broad beans and the beetroot and these sort of things. And the other side's a pretty side. So that's kind of how I worked it out and then just started taking it from there and as I say asking advice but it really does it helps to keep the brain going and it helps to give you the fresh air and I'm so lucky where I live it's just so quiet it's just a bird song at times so that's I'm, I was to say I'm very fortunate so I just try to keep holding on to that and that helps you with your stroke recovery as well having gratitude for what you've got. I mean it sounds idyllic and uh, I really want to come for dinner around your house with all that fresh produce that so you're, you're growing in your garden. <laughs> um, Ruth, uh, do you mind me asking how soon after your stroke you, you took up gardening? How, how, how soon was it part of your recovery? Well, basically at the start, after you've had a stroke, it feels like you've hit a brick wall. And I was in a different house then and I really began to feel quite isolated. So luckily this one came up and I've managed to move here and it's got the garden. So it's two years since so if anybody tells you you're on a plateau you, you really it's not you just keep working through everything so two years since i started to garden and honestly it has helped so much um and and for others that are maybe joining us today or, or will watch this later um 
I mean, just as we kind of come to an end to talk about the gardening side of things, how important is it or, or how important could it be for people that perhaps either don't feel like they're able to or, or aren't sure what to do or how to get started? Um, is there any advice you'd give them right now around getting in the garden and how important that could be for people? I think if you haven't done it before, the best way probably to start is like with a few hair pot, pots on your windowsill because that helps mm. with your cooking. It gives you a starting point. And also to ask around, because there's lots of allotment of societies, there's lots online. Dobbies do all these wonderful videos and everything. So people are very willing to help you with gardening. It's a great topic to get into. Yeah, and it's a nice to hear that, actually. It's not just a personal thing. It can be a really social thing as well. And we've seen a lot of, of people involved in allotments, and it's, it's a community thing as much as it is um, something you do in your own garden as well. So um, as you say, lots of resources out there. Uh, I've talked about the stuff available on My Stroke Guide in partnership with Dobbies. So please check that out. And also, we, we've got a Stroke Association resource called Staying Active When You're at Home, um, which talks a little bit about gardening in that resource as well. So. Again, we're going to post all these links. Don't worry if you're watching and there's lots of links being posted right now and you feel like you've got to get them all um, at, at, at once. So we'll post them in our weekly roundup email as well and you'll get a whole longer list of useful resources uh, that we've been talking about this week in this session. So um, lots for you to check out uh, about what we're talking about today. Um, Alice, I'd like to talk to you next, if that's OK, about this incredible London Marathon challenge you've done for the Stroke Association. And before we talk to you, we have a little video and we're going to play that now, if that's OK. The London Marathon, known around the world for its record breakers, fundraisers and nearly didn't makers. Thousands line the streets to witness a sea of pacemakers, headline getters and a whole host of blink and you'll miss us. The 2020 is different, different challenges and different memories than any of us had planned. But the spirit hasn't gone and we're following one runner who hasn't let lockdown stop them. 25-year-old Alice Jefferies from Waterlooville near Portsmouth in the early stages of her marathon challenge. Two sets of fans want to keep her cool and all of her family and friends supporting her on this epic challenge. Running for the Stroke Association, sadly her grandmother died of a stroke a few years ago. Alice very, very thankful for all those who are supporting her, including her sister Anna. Good luck, Al. I know you're going to absolutely smash this and I'm so proud of you for doing this for such a good cause and taking on such a crazy extra challenge. Alice, hello. I've just heard about your challenge <laughs> and it made me laugh because it's stupid, but a brilliant thing to do. Just to be absolutely clear, I will not be joining in, but I'll be cheering you on. So good luck. Uh, who knew you could get so excited by a message from Greg James? It may even have gone to her head. Well, she's beyond halfway now, but this is where it really begins to hurt. She's looking good, though. Let's check in with how she's feeling. I had a little, whew, but I'm coming back up the other side. Every five minutes, someone has a stroke. So in those two hours, we helped donate money to save a lot of people. Good treadmill technique from Alice, who's been training since January. Not the normal view of London here, of course, but use your imagination. Just running past Big Ben. One last check of the watch, heading for an excellent time here. I'm at the mile! Look who's come out to say hello! Boyfriend Ryan looking on, obviously got some good contact into the last few hundred metres now, waving to all of her supporters, looking excellent. Almost got the finish line in sight, just one last big push, there it is. Come on, Alice, you can do it. And there she's through the finish line. Well done, Alice. Colin the dog getting in on the act as well to say well done. Congratulations. Let's get her final thoughts. If anyone wants to drag me, I don't want to see it again. <laughs> wow. Um, what an amazing video that was to, to watch. Um, Alice, welcome. Uh, I really want to talk to you about this incredible challenge um maybe actually Alex, if we could start uh it mentioned on the video you sadly lost your grandma's stroke do you want to talk a little bit about your reasons for supporting the stroke association 
Yeah, so um, obviously, I like I said, I lost my granny to a stroke um, several years ago now. And my sister also works for the a stroke re- rehabilitation department in a London hospital. She's a physio. So she every day sees obviously um, survivors of strokes and sees how they have to be rebuild their lives and everything. So I think the two kind of personal connections that I have to stroke was such a motivator for me to get me through my finish line. And on the day of the marath- uh, my lockdown marathon as well, uh, my sister was getting personal messages from some of her patients that she was reading out to me. So it was kind of those little things that really made me realise why I was doing it and really understand the importance of how much the money I was raising was making such a change to those people. I mean, it, that's probably an understatement, actually. Right now, the Stroke Association needs uh, people like yourselves fundraising more than ever before. It's such an important time for us as a charity to raise funds during this global pandemic we've been living through. Um, all charities are struggling right now. We're incredibly grateful for your fundraising achievements. It, it will go a huge way into rebuilding lives after stroke. We know that. Um, so we're, we're really thankful uh, for starters. But it, I mean, it must have been a disappointment initially. Um, obviously, the pandemic prevented you from doing the London Marathon. Um, how did that feel? And then how did it kind of transfer into this very unique challenge of doing the marathon in your back garden? Um, I really don't know, <laughs> to be honest. Um, it just kind of started from one day I was chatting to my mum about it and I thought, oh, maybe I could do the marathon on the treadmill. And I must have, the lockdown must have made me crazy because I, in my head I thought it was going to be so much easier than doing the actual thing. And it was like it was so, so hard. It was one of the hardest things I've ever done. But I was just so overwhelmed by the amount of support I had. I had like, over 50 people zooming in and watching me. And like I said, I had the personal messages coming through. Um, and it was such a like just so overwhelming I think and especially because I managed to get Steve Cram and the BBC involved as well I think it just made it so much uh, uh, so much more amazing and I was just so pleased that it could get the Stroke Association all the kind of recognition and the publicity that it deserves as well and it was just such a motivator because I think if I didn't have all that support behind me I could have easily just got off and (laughs) not finished the challenge. Um, I mean, the, the awareness raising, the BBC coverage is, is so crucial on top of the, the vital funds that you've raised um, to raise awareness of stroke and the Stroke Association is so important for us as well right now. So, again, it's, it's amazing to see that coverage of the video is fantastic and a special guest appearance from, from Stroke Association supporter Greg James in there. Uh, yeah. Are you a fan of his? Did you know that was coming? Fan, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I requested if I could speak to him in some way, but he sent me the video the day before as a little good luck message. So I had to watch that a few times to get me through the some of the lows. <laughs> yeah, you're definitely keeping that one, aren't you? <laughs> oh, definitely. <laughs> Help me. Um, I'd like, really thing. Yeah, absolutely. I'd, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about about keeping active, um, and and actually, oh, there's two things I want to speak to you about. So you, you mentioned about um, sort of the difference, and you thought it might be easier than running the the actual London Marathon, but in fact, it was it, much more difficult. We talked a little bit earlier about mental health and um, how important it is to keep active. Do, do you have any sort of thoughts on that yourself? And it must have been quite a challenge, obviously doing that with very little around you, you haven't got the distractions yeah. of all the people and the, the atmosphere. Um, have you got anything you want to say around that at all? Yeah, I think the biggest struggle with doing it on the treadmill and not having the atmosphere like you would in the actual London Marathon was it was mentally a lot harder. Because um, although I have my boyfriend here and I have people on, on Zoom, it was not the same atmosphere. And I think that is such a huge thing of what that's why I still want to do the actual thing because obviously you've got all of that to keep you going um but generally keeping active I'm I generally try to keep quite active anyway because it helps me so much mentally um so I think it's just something that's really important for everybody especially during lockdown when your normal day-to-day routine isn't the same and you can't go out and do what you would always want to do it's something to kind of get you out give you a bit of routine and just mentally can keep you so much more kind of focused and happier I think. Yeah I might bring you in actually Emma here because I mean after this isn't necessarily to do with stroke we, we know that keeping active uh, both mentally and physically is good for, for anybody um, but obviously the work you're doing is specific to stroke Emma and, and this really applies too for, for stroke survivors doesn't it? Yeah it definitely does. Um, stroke is such a huge change and 
people have to get used to their new way of life and, and rebuilding their life. Um, and then for lockdown to have happened and then get people have to get used to a whole new normal, it made it even more important that um, we do whatever we can to support stroke survivors uh, with the mental health. And like you said, the physical health links so much. We, we often separate the two, but actually they're, they're both very much interlinked. Um, and that's why we cover both sides of that in, in what we do online and face to face. Thanks, Emma. And Alice, just before we um, uh, maybe see what comments and questions have come in so far, um, final thing for you, how much how much did you raise in the end? What was the final total? Um, my current total is like just under 4,300. Um, wow. I, can, I can keep fundraising until I do the actual marathon. So that might be October next year or up until 2023. So I will continue to keep raising money. I mean, that's amazing. And the fact that you're keeping going is even more amazing. Uh, so, I mean, huge congratulations on that fundraising total. Absolutely brilliant. Um, we'll come back to you in a moment, Alice, if that's okay. I want to talk to you a little bit more. But um, Natalie, we might bring you back on at this this point to see what questions and comments we've had so far. I think we've had a few comments in the chat box. Hi, everyone again. Um, we've had lots of comments into the chat box today. So thank you again for everyone who is watching and joining us. Um, I've got a question to pose to each of you if that's okay so far. So I'll start with Emma. Um, we've had a lot of sort of questions around when people are starting to keep active and um, so soon after their stroke. Uh, some people may struggle to fit this in to find a routine or to fit in new exercise and hobbies. Do we have any sort of tips that we might be able to share today around people who are looking to stay active but are not quite sure how it might fit into their daily lives at the moment? Yeah, I think the main thing is to remember that um, activity doesn't always mean exercise. So you might already be a little bit more active than you think you are. If you're trying to do some small jobs around the house, a little bit of dusting, if you can manage to walk outside to into your garden, um, go to a local shop, um, even things like keeping your brain active, watching quiz shows, um, if you're doing, if you're chatting to people, it's all keeping yourself active and actually you might find that you do a lot more than you already do so think about that first before you start adding extra things in perfect thank you emma um again i say lots of people loved um your video alice and there's lots of comments on there um congratulating your achievement and saying that you're such an inspiring person to join us today who has done such amazing work for not only our charity but inspired lots of other people on here to get up and do something active um like yourself so thank you um ruth i do have a question for yourself if that's okay um there's been a few comments around fatigue and people are questioning around that in early stroke when they wanted to keep active and maybe do things in their garden and who suffer from fatigue have you got any sort of tips for people who may be worried about um their fatigue at the moment or who are looking to do some gardening how um, have you overcome that in your in your experiences well basically i would say that i haven't overcome it i'm trying to mitigate it so every afternoon i just have to go and lie down and I would say rest when your body tells you, because if you don't, the next day makes it so much harder and you can't concentrate. So the gardening is great, but if you're finding things a bit overwhelming, just take things very, very easily and just do a little bit one day and then you can do something the next day because fatigue is a real, it's a real downer. Thank you, Ruth. And I think that's really important, as I said, we, going back to what we've been talking about today around keeping active and your well-being. Um, so thank you all. That's all the uh, questions I have to na uh, for now. But um, please feel free, if anybody does have any more comments, uh, please do pop them in the chat box. Thanks, Natalie. Yeah, please do keep asking your questions to today's panel. Uh, we're going to keep talking for a little bit longer. Um, sadly, it looks like technology has, has failed us this morning and we did lose Tony. Um, what we'll try and do is, is perhaps get a short video from Tony um, sharing what he was going to be speaking about today and we'll post that in, in our weekly roundup as well so you can still hear from him. 
Um, and Emma, uh, I, I know you work with Tony actually, so maybe we can not necessarily speak on his behalf, um, but certainly uh, help us talk, talk a little bit about some of the things that he was talking about too. Um, but maybe Emma first, uh, going back to sort of what you were just talking about, sort of tips and strategies for, for our audience watching today who are looking to keep active and stay positive. Do you want to talk a little bit more about that and perhaps share with people? Um, yeah, so one of the things that um, I always do is what we call a pre-assessment where I'll have a chat with people and we've got some little um, some little tips which I call pre. Um, so the first one for, for P is to plan. Make sure that you plan what you're doing. Um, that might be going to an exercise class, it might be finding videos, it might be general things around the house, but make sure you plan it and actually write it down like you would anything else that, that you do, any other appointment you've got. And as I said before, keep in mind when you are planning what you already do during the day and make sure you're planning your activity and your rest to help with your fatigue. Um, once you've started doing a little bit, it's really important to reflect on what you've done as well. So how did you feel afterwards? How did you feel during that? Um, was your fatigue worse? Um, and then that means that it might might mean that you want to change something that you've done, maybe take a step back. Or you might find that actually you, you can do a little bit more than, than you assumed. And as long as you're taking that very gradually, that, that's not a problem. Um, and then I always say that E in pre is for enjoy. Make sure you enjoy what you're doing. So choose something that you really like. Um, get other people involved if you if you can, whether that is online. Um, like we've just seen a great uh, a great thing there in, in the video about getting people involved online. Or now it might be that you can go for a little walk with other people. But make sure it's something you enjoy try new things um, and if you don't enjoy it try something different thanks emma and sorry about the little noise in the background that was me trying to desperately sort my power out before it all um went down so <laughs> i'm back and um those tips again we can we can share those we put them on screen um, don't worry if you didn't catch them all right there we'll, we'll post them after as well um emma tony if, if he was here he's, he's part of one of your your online groups um, we have a short video, actually, which I think we can still play, so we'll play that now, but uh, perhaps we can talk a little bit about Tony's involvement in the group as well. Um, but let's play that video. A stroke survivor has been explaining how regular exercise has been vital to his health and well-being throughout the COVID crisis. A stroke can leave people with difficulty moving, with communication problems and emotional issues. And that's why support groups have moved online to make sure they can help people recover even when they can't meet face to face. Our health correspondent Helen Ford reports from Gateshead. So let's start with just a gentle march. Tony Robson may be on his own, but he's very much part of a community. He's linking up with other stroke survivors for a virtual exercise session. It's vital. It's vital. You've got to keep exercising. It's so just for your mindset, if nothing else. Tony experienced a life-changing stroke a little over a year ago and was making huge strides in his recovery. The restrictions imposed by COVID-19 threatened that progress. Things had been going so well for you. Yeah. And um, you had had that independence to go and meet people, yeah. to go for walks and interact with others. Mm. To suddenly have lockdown at first, it was really difficult. It, it was really, really difficult. Yeah. It's why Tony has been joining regular online sessions like this, which are run by the Stroke Association. In normal times, participants would meet in person. And while that's not possible, the need to regain fitness and limit the chances of another stroke are as crucial as ever. It's really important that we carry on our exercise even through these very strange times yeah. so that we can improve our mobility, improve the general fitness and just help with everyday tasks around the home that are going to make things a lot easier for you. The 
charity says the isolation often felt by stroke survivors has been magnified by the COVID crisis. And while the move to virtual services has been straightforward for many, others have required extra support to get online. Our staff have worked with those stroke survivors in the form of accessing grants to enable them to purchase digital equipment such as a tablet and then supporting the stroke survivor over the telephone so that they can join in with our online sessions which can be a lifeline for people who might be feeling extremely excluded and isolated at this time. Before his stroke, Tony was a keen cyclist and runner and while he knows it's a long road to recovery, those passions spur him on. I want to be able to run again and, and cycle. So, watch this space. <laughs> These virtual sessions began as a necessity and for many can't replace face-to-face -face contact. But online gatherings have practical benefits for others and may, in some form, be here to stay. See you. Bye. Helen Ford, ITV News, Gateshead. Another fantastic video and, and thanks to Tony and, and Emma for, for letting us share that today. Um, it's a real shame we haven't got Tony to talk about, about this now, but Emma, perhaps if I can come to you on this. The biggest thing I took from, from that film that I just watched was community, the word community. And actually, we would be doing a lot of this face to face. People would have that peer to peer support. Um, that hasn't been lost. It's obviously had its challenges. We've relied on technology, as we discussed earlier. but. How important has that been for people like Tony and, and for others as part of your groups? It's been massive. Um, it's, it's been one of the biggest things, I'd say. Um, Tony especially, um, he actually saw us in our walking group. He was out walking his dog and just noticed that we were there and came up and spoke to us, um, which took a lot, I think, at first. Um, and he quickly became a very a regular member of the group, um, and started doing other things with the people he met there too. And we've, we've tried to make sure that those groups can continue to do that. So we, we've had little catch up sessions where it is just a chat. Um, and each of our exercise sessions, we now start 15 minutes early as well, so that everyone can join in and have a bit of a chat to each other before I, I start any exercise. And it, it, people have just said it, it's made such a difference to, to still be able to speak to other stroke survivors. And some of them haven't got anyone else at home to speak to either. So important, as you say. And um, if anybody's watching now, Emma, that, that may be interested in joining one of these groups or seeing what's available in their areas, what's, what's your advice for them? I'd say to um, reach out to the Stroke Association if, if, um, if you can. We do have coordinators across the country and if we don't have one of these groups on, the coordinators will have some um, information about what's on in the area. We have obviously got our online um, videos as well that we've done with A Stroke of Luck. And you know you don't need to do those on your own either. You could be watching that video and doing that and a friend could be doing it at the same time as you. Um, so it's just making sure that whatever you choose to do, um, you know that it's right for you. All of the, the best videos and um, sessions will let you know who it's aimed at and whether it, it's suitable for you. Um, it might be that you've got to watch a separate video or read something, but make sure you do that first um, and then get other people involved. Thanks, Emma. Um, Emma mentioned getting in touch with the Stroke Association. You can get in touch through our website or we'll post details in the chat box as well on how you can get in touch with your local teams. And you also mentioned, Emma, the, the Stroke of Luck videos, which have only just been released in the last few weeks, actually. And I, I was watching them a couple of days ago and they are a fantastic resource for anybody uh, wanting to do anything active after stroke. It's definitely worth taking a look at the Stroke of Luck videos we've done in partnership with them. Um, they're available on, on my stroke guide, I believe, as well as uh, on our YouTube channel and our website. So we'll post links to those too. Um, we're running out of time, but Ruth, I, I want to speak to you again. You, you spoke earlier on about gardening, but you also mentioned lots of other things that you do to keep active. Um, you sound like a very busy person, but do you want to tell us a little bit about some of the other stuff that you do 
and particularly the the challenge you were telling me about uh, when we spoke a couple of days ago that you're taking on in Edinburgh next year. Yeah, basically, at the end of last year, I started to think I needed to get a bit more active because eventually you do start to feel a bit better after a stroke. So I listened to the Chris Evans breakfast show and they're always talking about running and I thought, maybe I could do that. So I got together with one of the guys from the stroke group that I go to and his wife and we've just started on the NHS Couch to 5K. So we managed to get up to run in 25 minutes before lockdown. And then, of course, I was doing it while I was doing an Alice, but nothing like her in my garden. I was running around my garden during lockdown at the start of lockdown because, you know, I didn't want to go out. And then eventually we've got back and we're now running around a lovely park. So we've managed 5K yesterday. We, we did it. So we know we can do it next May. So that's it. just trying to raise some money for the Stroke Association. So. Congratulations on the 5K and, and I mean, keep us posted, Ruth, on this fundraising challenge and uh, we wish you all the best. And again, thanks for the fundraising. It's it's vitally important for, for the Stroke Association right now, so we are incredibly grateful. Um, Ruth, uh, I'm sorry, Alice, if, if we can come to you uh, one last time and, and maybe just talk about um, some goal setting, I think, which we know is so important in any stroke survivor's recovery. Um, it, I think it doesn't matter what kind of staying active challenge you're taking on. That could be a London Marathon. It could be absolutely anything of any size or shape or form. What would your advice be for people sort of uh, setting these challenges for themselves to keep active and perhaps the goals that they need to put in place to achieve that? Um, I would say really just stay focused and don't be too hard on yourself. I think so many people want to build themselves up too quickly and there's some days that you will really really struggle doing something the other day before you found really really easy um like when I was training I'd have some days where I'd run 15 miles and I could keep on running for that and the next day I'd barely run for 15 minutes so I think it's just about acknowledging that you can have good days and you can have bad days and just setting very achievable goals and not being hard on yourself when you do have the bad days because every day at the end of the day is a pro like a progressive day into the towards your goal some great advice thank you thanks alice and uh, anybody watching or, or anybody who has friends and families that may want to do a fundraising challenge for the stroke association um, we have lots available to look at on our website virtual challenges similar to, to what alice has done and, and and ruth has mentioned as well um lots of available events for you to participate in and get involved in our step for stroke and, and various other challenges are available Take a look at those, we'll post the links too. Uh, we're running out of time, so I'm gonna bring Natalie on for one last time to see if there's any final comments or quick questions we have for the panel. Hi everyone again. I would just like to share um, some comments if that's okay. Um, just around more how people are staying active at the moment. So um, a few comments, Nick is saying that he's keeping active by walking his dog. Um, Mike is saying that he's going to try and mow the lawn for the first time today. Um, so some really nice achievements and goals that people are setting themselves um, to stay active during these times. And one comment I would like to share from Judith who mentioned around how staying active is important for everybody, including carers. So activity is important for them. They need to keep well mentally and physically to look after the person they care for. They may garden to provide something for a stroke survivor to look at, for example, flowers or birds. And I think that's a really nice comment to share around what we've talked about today is that staying active is for everybody, for stroke survivors, their family, their carers. Um, so I thought that was a really nice. So thank you, Judith, for sharing that with us today. Um, that's all the comments I have for now, but thank you for everyone who has shared those with us today. I look forward to the reading those next time. Thanks, Natalie. And yeah, a great place to, to leave it, I think, that staying active is for everybody. Um, and, and I think we can all take that message away today. Um, I just want to say a huge thank you to Emma, to Ruth, to Alice and Tony, of course, who wasn't able to join us in the end. But before we leave, um, I asked you to share one top tip from yourselves on staying active. Um, maybe if we can just quickly run through those. Emma, have you, have you got a top tip for everybody listening today? Enjoy it. That's the main thing. If you're not enjoying it, do something different that you do enjoy. Love it. Thank you, Emma. Ruth, your top tip for everyone watching? I would say step by little step. Fantastic. Thank you. And Alice? Combination of the, both of those, really. Um, just enjoy it and just take each share as it comes, really. It doesn't need to be a big thing to be active. 
think that's sound advice from you all. And uh, look, we're really grateful for you joining us today. I, I can see from the chat box, people have really enjoyed listening to your stories. Keep doing amazing things. We want to hear more about it and maybe we can catch up with you in future stroke assemblies on, on your next challenges and successes. But uh, Ruth, Emma, Alice, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you. And that's all we have time for in today's Stroke Assembly webinar. We are back for the next five weeks, every Wednesday at 11 o'clock. Next week, we focus on supporting your recovery. So please do join us, spread the word as well. We'd really love more people to join these webinars. Anybody affected by stroke can join. Um, you just need to sign up on our website. So we'll hopefully see you next week at 11. But for now, goodbye, take care.